Hello everybody. So I was asked how I'm charging two DPUs off of one solar setup. So one high voltage, one low voltage that I currently have connected to my primary DPU. So it takes all the solar in. Today's a great day, 4200 in. And you see 2500 out because the only way I've found to efficiently charge two of them is to take off my secondary DPU from the home panel and charge it from the AC line. So currently I set it to 1300 watts because there's other appliances on the same circuit for my office. So I set it to 1300 in. It's almost charged on a good day. It'll charge in about four hours. It's at 1300. And then I will turn off the AC and then I could put the system back together. We're just plugging this back into the smart home panel and I'll have the six kilowatt battery here and the four stack powering the house. But I haven't found any other way to decently charge the second DPU from one solar and I didn't really want to keep connecting and reconnecting the solar or connecting and disconnecting. That was getting old. So I leave all the solar here. I make this an AC load like any other appliance in the house. Disconnect it because the smart home panel will not accept or the smart home panel won't allow the DPU to take the AC charge as long as it sees it on the main line. So you have to disconnect the main line so it doesn't see it and then the DPU will take the AC charge. So it takes about four hours on a good sunny day. The rest of the day this has been getting up to the high 80s, almost in the 90s. I set mine to 97. So it's been working well as long as I have a decent input. Um, that's been the only way I can get to charge both DPUs off one solar until I put more solar up next uh, spring. If there's another way out there, please let me know. But so far, to get a decent charge, that's the only way I've been able to do this. I did notice when I had it connected to the smart home panel that it did a state of charge. So it, it took a big hunk of the power from here and put it over here as long as this was under 30%. So if this was in the 60s or 70s in a charge range and this was under 30 or vice versa because it's gone both ways now then it would stabilize the charge between the two with a state of charge conversion right through there through the smart home panel it would send 7,000 watts to and from as long as one of them was under 30 it has not done it when either battery was over 30 even with a potential charge difference of 40 50 percent between the two if this was in the you know, 80s or something, and down here was in the, the 40s or 50s, then it won't do it. It's only been when these are in the 30s that it kicks off a state of charge balancing act. So that's the only way I've been able to get a charge to the second DPU in a decent amount of time, four hours, because it's only a single battery. And then the rest of the day, I just let, I just reconnected to the panel to help take the load for the house and then just let the solar continue to charge. Uh, the four stack and it splits the house load, right? It'll only put two or three hundred watts over here and the difference will be over here and it, it's balancing based on the capacity it has. So I think that's fantastic. And like I said, today's a great sunny day. We've been having lots of those fortunately. So it's been working. We'll see what winter brings. Oh, and with winter, I've now converted the shed panels over to the winter setup. And by that, I mean, I just drop them against the shed so that they fall flush with the shed. And since then, I've been getting about 1.3 kilowatts. It jumped at about six, 700 watts from when you saw it last at the summer position raised up. I have them laying flat. So definitely helps there. And then a quick generator update. The flex pipe I was using, this guy, vibrated itself right out of there after running it for a while doing a kind of a stress test so it vibrated out so i put a new connector on here inch and a quarter connector on the muffler and i'll just use the elbow here to connect up and i took this flex line that'll just sit here and bounce like this and take any of the vibration from the engine and not translate it to the frame right there. So this will be my new shock absorbing system, something like this, where it'll vibrate with the engine as needed and won't translate it directly to the connection to the frame right there. And it'll, it'll keep it isolated like the rubber gaskets do there. So this is my next try at keeping the vibration isolated 
between the generator and the frame. But I think that that flex line just kept it too rigid. It was too rigid and just vibrated itself right out of position. So no damage, but still trying it a different way. Hope that answers some questions I got out there. Thank you.